Well, folks, hello and welcome back to Relaxing Woodshop. My name is David. No, Christopher is not here with us today. He has left me on my lonesome, but he has given me a task to do. So we originally planned to do our big Halloween um, show uh, this week, and we decided just to delay it to the next show because Christopher wants me to do a cat stroke dog dual bowl for his new cat. And obviously, I'm basically told what to do. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, set it out. We're gonna try and do this more with hand tools than anything else. Now, there might be a bit of routing to do, but as, as a whole, we're gonna do it uh, with hand tools. And we're also gonna use some beautiful, beautiful wood. But we wanna take a wee second out to thank you so much uh, for all your comments, your likes, and of course your subscribes. We're now at 442, so Christopher's fantastic 58 to get to our magic 500 number by Christmas. Might not be impossible, don't think it will, but it might not be impossible. But don't forget, the 500 subscriber, 500, 500th subscriber, will get a beautiful pen if you live in Ireland or the UK. And of course, Christopher then has promised next year to make a wooden rocket that actually goes up. How he's going to do that, nobody knows. But anyway, so folks, thanks again, and let's get into the video. Okay, folks, as you know, we like to do a wee bit of upcycling when we can in here. So over a few of the shows over the years, we had some beautiful hardwood from old kitchens. So what we're going to do, we're going to use this lovely lump of wood here. And I think that's mahogany. I'm just not 100%, but it looks like it. Two nice wee bowls uh, with the nice wee paw prints on them. That will be inserted into there. Then we have this. A uh, piece of wood which we're going to use as an X on each side of the legs, and then this wee piece of uh, metal rod that we, if you remember, one of our hot rod shows, uh, and we're going to slide that through, and then just put a wee bolt in each end, and that'll support the legs. Should a cat or dog get a wee bit excited with their food, as we know some of them do. Okay, folks, we just want to do a few measurements first. So, for the easiest way to do this is set the wood down. Turn the bowls over now. Obviously, you're not going to cut out that bit of the wood because, of course, it will fall through. But what we want to do is we just want to know where our gaps in between. So, using a standard ruler, I'm using the thickness of the ruler. So, put the ruler there, and that'll set up your wee bowl to there. Again, put the ruler in between the bowls and bring that bowl to there. And then do it again on this side here, and then we'll draw a line. And what that allows us to do, if the cameraman could come in, we'll be able to let you see here that that's the line there. So now we know that they're perfectly spread apart once we cut that line. And as you know, because we're doing this by hand, I'll be getting out the old fashioned saw for this one. So now that that's cut out by hand, that was enjoyable, don't always like using the machines, we'll put the wee bowls back on. Now what we're going to do is, obviously if you go to the outer line, it's going to fall through, we don't want that. But we will mark or circle around that line, so we know our basis for the size of that. Then we're going to measure this wee bit of the bowl, so we'll uh, take out the lip and bring that circle in 
three or two to three mil will be all we'll need for that. So we'll mark these round uh, and then we'll get our wee compass out and we'll go in a few mil. Now guys, just before we actually do uh, the angle here, what I wanted to do is got, get the circle, the center of the circle. Now that we've cut the, put a trace line on the outer edge, turn the bowl over and set it in the middle and then do the inner circle edge. And what that means is you have the maximum depth uh, before the bowl will fall through and the minimum depth to where the bowl won't fit in. So what we wanna do is we wanna go in between that line. So I don't know, it's gonna be hard to see there, but we wanna go in between the innermost and the outermost and go right in the middle. That means the ball will fall into it, but it also means you can get your fingers in to lift it up. Sounds to be a bit more complicated than what it is, but it's really not. Now obviously we're still gonna be doing some other wee bits with our hands, so we are. But just for coring out the center bit of this, I've just got my Ryobi drill and I've got a drill bore and we're just gonna bore out the big bits and then we'll get the wee um, Pam uh, hack, no, stop. Jigsaw. Jig, no. Okay, now obviously just to take out the center piece a wee bit easier. Yes, we do have a drill bit and we're gonna use uh, the bore hole here and we'll just cut out that, that section. Then we'll get the jigsaw in and follow our lee wee line round. That gets a wee bit trickier, but we're gonna sand that down and I probably will use a, a writer and write her off the edges. And we're doing it by hand, but just for the, to make that nice and neat as you're lifting it out and you want it nice and clean and tidy there. And then once that's done, we'll set it aside, we'll not sand straight away, check that the bowl's fit, and then we'll get onto the feet. Put a wee drill hole in a couple of places and work around it. I just want as maximum amount of room so I can creep up on that line and then do a wee router towards that. So that's why I just wanted plenty of ample space so when I get my, 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 my jigsaw I can go in there and then just work around it gently and make sure that it's, it's as, as smooth as possible before we get the, um, yeah, yeah, the <laughs> router that I just said 20 seconds ago, router. So guys, as you know, we like to show all the warts and everything else that goes wrong in here. So as I was drilling out the core, which I thought was gonna be handy because then it could go through, with this being such a hard wood, my jigsaws that I have were not cutting through it. So what I've had to do is I've had to get a rider bit, a straight rider bit, go in about one to one and a half centimeters, some, and then go back out, go in again at two centimeters, they get half the depth there, which means then the jigsaw will make easier and lighter passes at it there. So we're all now to the jigsaw, so we've done the rider bit, we're all now to the jigsaw, and you can see how it goes around a lot easier. Okay folks, so now we've got that done, we're on to the legs. So we need a nice X, but a much shorter X if that makes sense, so squeeze together. So what we'll do is we'll cut four of these. We're gonna go 16 centimeters. So we'll cut four 16 centimeters, and then we'll put them together and angle them up to see if we can get the right angle. <laughs>
Well, folks, there you have it for another week at the Relaxing Wood Shop. I hope you enjoyed that. So just a wee bit, with the solid wood being as thick as it was, it's turned out beautiful, but I don't know if I would ever do it as thick as that again. I would much keep, rather keep to a thinner piece. Uh, but there's no doubt it's not going to go anywhere, and it would probably sit a much bigger dog, so it would. So I hope you enjoyed it. And now, don't forget, hopefully Chris are here next week. We will have our spectacular event. Yes, it is our Halloween special. And we have been looking in and we have been analysing a few horror movies and we've noticed a problem with a few of the vampire slayers. And I think we need to make a tool for the vampire slayer so that he can quickly dispose of his vampires and get on to the next one. So we'll look forward to seeing you next week the Relaxing Woodshop. Take care. <laughs>